Hello, I'm JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at another failed electrical product. Or not necessarily failed yet, but uh, we'll have a look inside it and see uh, what could possibly go wrong. Uh, here is the offending device. Uh, it's one of these nightlight things that uh, supposedly comes on when it's dark, and of course uh, switches off automatically in the daytime. Uh, the failed design of it implies it should be connected into the mains permanently, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And this one is still new in its packet. This was obtained from a shop which sells items at a fixed price, such as a pound or 99 pence. Uh, so it's brand new in the pack, never been opened, so uh, we'll see if it uh, does or doesn't work, and uh, then have a look inside. Now, before uh, opening this device, so just plug it in and see if it does actually work. So, uh, normal socket outlet here. Of course, not really normal because it's through this uh, transformer, and the packaging is designed in such a way that the pins protrude from the back there, so we don't even have to take out the packaging to try it. So shove it in here and uh, see if it blows up. Well, no flames yet, and theoretically the sensor's here, so if we cover it up... Oh yes, there we go, the lights will in fact switch on. Now they look fairly dim here because there's a lot of lighting in this room, but uh, I imagine those are actually quite bright in the uh, darkness, so uh, certainly appears to operate as described. There seems to be some sort of small delay in that uh, switching on. Let's just have a look at that in the dark to see how it would actually work in a more realistic scenario. So here we are, the lights on. I'd say these are actually quite powerful lights in this room. So if we uh, turn those off, the uh, thing should switch on. We can get some idea of how bright it actually is. So, well, there we go. That certainly lights up. I don't think I'd want that as a night light in uh, anybody's room. That's uh, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I can't imagine that uh, that's going to make people sleep particularly well. So uh, there we go. So let's put the lights back on. So here is the product in the packaging as supplied. Uh, just some sort of list of packaging there. Pretty obviously it's got the sensor on the front there to uh, detect whether it's dark or not. The uh, LED parts there. And of course the uh, three pin plug on the back. Now before we even open the packaging there's already a problem here because uh, if we just zoom in on the uh, back there these are the three plug pins. Now of course the earth is just plastic. No surprise there. Now the other two are metal, but uh, if you just look carefully there, you'll see that the pins are in fact out of line with each other. This one's sort of bent at a strange angle, and uh, so is this one. So uh, before we've even opened the thing, we're already looking at uh, a potential possible disaster when it jams into the socket. A bit difficult to see there, we've just angled that. It's uh, fairly apparent that those two pins are not parallel with each other, when of course they should be. So uh, that's certainly not a good start. So let's just take it out of the packaging and see uh, what we can find inside. So we'll just, uh, just go in there with a the knife and uh, cut that open. It's also this annoying packaging that's not designed to be opened without dangerous tools. I must apply scissors in this packaging as well, and you of course need the scissors to open the packaging, and you just bought them because you didn't have any of it. Anyway, here's the thing itself. Uh, so it's uh, fairly uh, straightforward. No doubt it's made in many different varieties, with this uh, plug part just being replaced for various different countries. So, so there's a close look at those pins there, and uh, I mean they're not uh, horrendously out, but they're certainly not at the angle that they should be. So there's a definite bend on uh, both of them there. Uh, the thing itself does have the uh, CE mark on it, which may or may not be genuine. I believe that is the uh, proper mark. The fake ones are normally closer together, but whatever. Uh, just the usual things here, the voltage 220 to 240, uh, 1.5 watts, and of course it's LED and allegedly has the, uh, the S1363 plug on, although this certainly does not comply with the standard due to this uh, bent and defective part here. Now, just need to see if those are actually loose or not. Let's just see if that does bend at all. Oh, yes it does, look at that, we can actually uh, straighten it up using the pliers. So. Well, there we go, we've now repaired the device and now it's safe and lovely to use. If you believe that, and uh, you'll probably believe anything. So let's uh, have a look inside and see what we can find in there. Well, I'll just put the other ends on now to have a close up of these screws because before even opening the device, we've got a problem. Uh, this is the screw at the top of the device, and as you can see, it's some kind of tri wing thing. It's extremely small, this is of course magnified uh, many times. It also looks rather mashed and uh, destroyed. And uh, if we look at the bottom of the device, which has two fixings, it's another kind of strange triangular affair there with uh, obviously three sides and some other arrangement, and then the other screw in there is uh, the same. So uh, 
despite this only costing 99 pence, they've uh, gone to the bother of using things which uh, most people won't be able to open. Of course we'll be opening it anyway, so uh, that certainly didn't stop us, but uh, certainly odd that they've gone to that, and also used two totally different types of fastener as well, which uh, seems totally unnecessary, particularly given that they're trying to keep the cost of this thing to an absolute minimum. Now I've managed to undo the screws, they're these strange triangular things, and I haven't got anything that fits them, but it turns out that the uh, screws are made of such a soft metal that if you take a fairly decent screwdriver and just press hard, it will actually create its own slot, so then you can just undo the thing with fairly easily and uh, take the screws out. So thankfully they use such bad quality things that uh, pretty much any screwdriver would in fact open the device. So let's just uh, take that one out of there. So there we go, just two very nasty little screws holding that thing together. So let's see what we've got inside. So the top here just had a, another sort of similar tri-wing or something fixture. So just a plastic cover and then inside the device there we have the uh, circuit board with three LEDs on it, so a couple of large uh, resistors in the bottom there. And presumably this will uh, come off, yes, so uh, that's just a plastic window. And then inside we have uh, this circuit board which appears to be on this uh, plastic peg, just for location at the top there. Yes, and as expected, there's really very little inside, so uh, let's just go in for a closer look there. So here we are inside the device, uh, just the two wires here from the line and neutral, uh, line at the bottom here, neutral on the top there. So uh, the line uh, just comes across here to the uh, terminal there, and then it goes via what appears to be a fuse of some sort, so at least I have included that. And then the neutral, uh, obviously on the other side there, comes over to the second wire just here. Uh, other things on the board here, we've got a couple of uh, fairly larger resistors, probably one watt or something. Uh, the three LEDs there, there appears to be a diode, uh, and we've got a small capacitor. This presumably is a uh, transistor of some sort. And then of course the light sensor, which presumably is a uh, light sensitive resistor or LDR or whatever they are, fixed in there, just two bits of sleeving to cover the two wires to that. So and another smaller resistor there. So not a great deal in there really, but then really what did you expect for 99 pence? So I'm quite surprised they have actually bothered to put a fuse in there, which uh, is something you uh, quite expect not to be found. So in terms of the uh, circuit operation, uh, basically we've got the line coming in on the uh, red wire here, and that goes to this pin here. Now that's actually connected up here via the small fuse on the back there, so it's so quite surprising that's actually in there. The uh, fuse uh, other side is connected to this other pad here, which is one of those larger resistors. That goes up to here, and then across here to another, okay, another one of that, what, the other resistor on the other side, and that comes back down to there via the diode to uh, convert it to what could be loosely described as DC. And then uh, those four terminals there are all common together, so we've got the uh, one side of the diode goes to the capacitor, which presumably is connected. Now we get across to the neutral, just by a bit of uh, smoothing out, presumably. And then the two terminals at the bottom, one is one side of the transistor, and the other side is the uh, one terminal of the LDR there. Uh, the other side of the LDR and the transistor are also common there, and we've got a single one here at the bottom, which is another resistor going across to the uh, neutral line there. And again, the track then comes up here, via the uh, three LEDs, which seem to be in series actually, they've just got the uh, links going through there from one to the other. And I've actually put plus and minus on, which is fairly helpful, minus being the neutral in this case. And so that uh, side there is all common together. Let's get those, uh, again, those pins there of the uh, transistor, the uh, diode and the capacitor. So uh, yeah, it's a relatively simple thing, the LDR will just uh, of course, apply a certain uh, voltage on one of them, all the pins, which will then switch on, connecting through to the LEDs there. And the uh, power they're going to be supplied with is going to be incredibly choppy, so it's only a single diode and a capacitor. And obviously, most of the uh, 
the reduction of voltage done by the two larger resistors here, which is where most of the power consumption is going to be as well. So this thing on the back did uh, claim a consumption of uh, 1.5 watts. And if you think these were half a watt LEDs, well, uh, I think again, because they're probably not, and it's probably most of the power is, say, on these uh, two resistors. The only problem with this device is the uh, wires here, which are totally unfused. Uh, any short or damage there is going to cause a bit of a fire. But so they have at least put a fuse on the board. Clearances wise, uh, it's pretty poor. I mean, it's probably just about marginal, but uh, bearing in mind you've got the line of neutral on the terminals here. So your line of neutral are these two terminals on here. So there is a certain clearance, although there seems to be a uh, little sliver of copper put in the middle there, which. Uh, Oh, I see, it's the symbol for AC, which uh, unfortunately they've put in the centre of the line in neutral pin, so that's probably compromised the actual space between the two. So, not ideal, that should be uh, erased, but in terms of width, uh, this is a 3mm screwdriver, so yeah, just about 3mm, not including, of course, the track. Without that, it's going to be uh, well, probably about 2mm clearance, which. Uh, Yes, that's certainly not ideal, but uh, again, we've seen far worse. Now, on the uh, circuit board, it appeared that the three LEDs, which are connected in series, uh, were actually connected across the supply permanently, uh, which did raise the question as to how they were being turned on and off, because clearly the device does work. And yet, with the LEDs permanently across the supply, that, of course, that would imply that they were going to be on all the time. And on the left side of the circuit here, all we've got really is the uh, fuse two 12k resistors and a diode that were just sort of converted to pulses of DC and then it goes through the three LEDs and then of course back to the supply there's a 16 volt 100 mic capacitor there in a feeble attempt to smooth out the pulses from the diode and if that was all that was in the circuit then yes the LEDs of course would stay on permanently and the device uh, of course would not be much use in terms of a nightlight because it would be on in the daytime as well. Now the other three uh, components on the board were the uh, light dependent resistor that small uh, resistor on the side, which is a 200K, and a single transistor. Now, the transistor turned out to be an S9014, although in reality pretty much any old transistor would do, and that's probably just what was available and knocking around at the time. Now, an LDR, when it's uh, in the dark or in a uh, dimly lit area, it's going to have a fairly high resistance, uh, usually in the order of sort of 1 meg or even more in many cases. And uh, with the configuration shown there, the transistor is not going to be conducting, so those three components may as well not be there, as they're not actually going to do anything. And of course that means the LEDs will be lighting up, and the current just flows uh, through the LEDs and back to the supply continuously, so no real surprise there. But uh, when the light shines on the LDR, uh, the resistance will fall dramatically, typically at sort of 10 or 5k or even less sometimes, so that of course will uh, turn the transistor on and it will conduct. And essentially then most of the current will then flow through the transistor rather than via the three LEDs. And the voltage across the LEDs will fall such that they no longer turn on. And whilst this does actually turn the LEDs on and off, it seems rather wasteful because in either state of either on or off, the current flowing in the circuit is going to be pretty much the same. It's primarily determined by the values of those two large resistors, which in this case are 12k each or 24k in total. So had they just left out those three components, the LDR, the resistor and the transistor, it would have cut down the cost of manufacture. The result would have been the lights would be on permanently, but it wouldn't have actually used any more or less power. It just would have meant they'd be on all the time, and maybe the uh, lifespan of the LEDs would be uh, a bit reduced because they'd be on 24 hours a day. But given it's such a cheap and nasty device anyhow, would that really have mattered? So quite an odd way of uh, turning things off in effectively shorting out the uh, three LEDs in order to turn them off, which... Uh, it doesn't really seem a particularly useful idea. Normally you would use the transistor to actually uh, turn the LEDs on and off directly, but apparently not in this case. So that's the uh, Pound Shop or 99p Shop uh, plug-in nightlight. Uh, it does work and uh, it's not too bad inside, although obviously uh, there's certainly room for improvement, but of course uh, when you're actually uh, manufacturing items and selling them in a retail environment for 99 pence, including uh, VAT and uh, any sort of profits they may want to make, then clearly you're going to end up with a very low cost and uh, corners cut type of device. But to uh, say so surprisingly, it does have a fuse in there, which at least is a start. Clearance on those two pins was uh, a bit thin, really. I mean, uh, two millimeters is uh, not really good enough. But uh, the main issue with these things, of course, is the overheating possibility. And uh, given that these things are supposed to be plugged in and left on 24 hours a day, then 
obviously uh, that's certainly a possibility although whether the plastic is flammable or not is another story the fact that the pins on the back bend is also not a good situation although i have managed to straighten them out with the pliers but of course they shouldn't actually be bending around in the first place and uh, going out of line so uh, that's not a good aspect and if they have been left in that bent position there's a good possibility of them uh, jamming into the socket and uh, causing it to be damaged so beware when buying uh, cheap electrical items until next time thanks for watching